For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. During this time of mounting crisis, when the world is desperately seeking relief and looking for global stability, help appears in a most startling form. In various locations around the world, the shout is heard, Jesus has come, Jesus has returned. A radiant, charismatic being appears claiming to be the Son of God. An army of news agencies flock to see this supernatural entity perform miracles. They hear him repeat many of the same words Jesus spoke in the scriptures. This event is beamed to the world via satellite, and millions mistakenly believe that his appearance on television has fulfilled the scripture, every eye will see him. Many religions are anxiously expecting a coming savior, and this dazzling being seems to be the answer to their prayers. But the Bible is warned in 2 Corinthians that Satan can even transform himself into an angel of light. Sadly, it's not Jesus the people welcome with open arms, but Satan masquerading as the Son of God. By doing this, the devil is able to unite the people of the world and reinforce his counterfeit system of worship. And so, the devil perpetrates the greatest deception ever carried out on the human race. The hour is urgent. Many of you have known me for many years, but I'm telling you right now, things I hadn't said years and years and years, and years ago, I believe, hear this, hear this, I believe that Jesus, God's Son, is about to appear physically in meetings and to believers around the world to wake us up. He appeared after His resurrection and He's about to appear before His second coming. You know, a prophet has sent me a word through my wife right here. And she said, tell your husband that Jesus is going to physically appear in his meetings. I'm expecting to see, I'm telling you that, I feel it's going to happen. I, 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 I'm, I'm careful in how I'm saying it now because I know the people in Kenya are listening. I know deep in my soul something supernatural is going to happen in, Ni in Nairobi, Kenya. I feel that. I may very well come back and you and Jen are coming to, Paul and Jen are coming to Nairobi with me. But Paul, we may very well come back with footage of Jesus on the platform. You know that the Lord appeared in Romania recently and there's a video of it where the Lord appeared in the back of a church and you see him on video walking down the aisle. Yeah. Paul, do you remember when I came on TV and years ago and showed you a clip of the Lord appearing in our church in Orlando on the balcony on the wall? Yeah, you, you remember that? Very well. I, I saw it. That was 80, 80 something, 86, whatever. You know, I always wondered why the Lord, why did he do that? Do you know why now I look back? That was the beginning of the greatest move of God in our church. Because 83, 84, and, and 85 were horrible years for me. Horrible years. 86, the blessings of God began. But they began with, a, with, with this manifestation of the Lord's face on, on the balcony. That stayed for eight weeks. Eight solid weeks. The Lord has done this in the past. But He's about to do it again. Now hear this. I'm prophesying this. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is about to appear physically in some churches and some meetings and to many of his people for one reason to tell you he is about to show up to wake up Jesus is coming saints you have held back from the Lord in the past don't you dare do it now the day will come you'll stand before him and give an answer how dare we not give to God how dare we hold back who do we think he is some neighbor of ours He's God Almighty. 
We fear, we fear the Lord God of hosts. More than ever before, the human race seems willing to surrender spiritually and emotionally to a charismatic leader who can offer peace and prosperity to a world trembling on the brink of ecological and social collapse, international financial chaos, and a nuclear holocaust. Well-known New Ager Benjamin Krem claims to be the coming world leader's advanced public relations man. In 1982, full-page advertisements around the world announced the coming of Krem's New Age Christ, which gave fresh hope to millions. At this press conference in Los Angeles, he described how this Christ would make himself known. It is a truism today to say that we are at the dawn of a new age, the age of Aquarius. And it is important to remember that all of the great religions await the coming of a teacher. The Christians await the return of the Christ, the Muslims await the Imam Mahdi, at the same time the Buddhists await the coming of another Buddha. The Hindus await the return of Krishna, and the Jews, as always, await the coming of the Messiah. I am speaking today about the return of such a teacher. Simultaneously, throughout the world will take place hundreds of thousands of spontaneous healings and cures, which will reinforce, if that were even necessary, the fact that it is the Christ himself. The Day of Declaration will be the outstanding event of this or any other century. On that day, the radio and the television networks of the world will be linked together. We shall see this extraordinary face on our television screens. But he will not speak. His words will drop silently into our minds in our own language. The Germany of the 20s and 30s was in social and economic despair and looked for a leader who would free them from the Great Depression. The man with a promise of hope was Adolf Hitler, who claimed he was ordained of God to usher in 1,000 years of peace and prosperity. His hypnotic powers manipulated an entire nation to surrender its collective mind. Obsessed with the economy, Hitler drew many of his bizarre ideas from Hinduism. Within Guruism, it's therefore not surprising that we find very positive sentences, very positive stances in relation to Nazism. A number of the Gurus have praised Hitler for what he has done, including his killing of six million Jews. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Persuaded by the false Christ, the miserable lost believe their only hope for relief from the devastating plagues is to eliminate those who oppose them. So the decision is made to search out and exterminate in one day the people of God who stubbornly hold to the scriptures. And so on the spiritual battlefield are those who follow the traditions of men and worship the beast, arrayed against those who love Jesus and obey his commandments. This is the final battle of Armageddon. A wicked world has finally reached the limit of God's patience. And it is time for God to step in and rescue his faithful children.